Inside one of the largest metropolitan areas of the United States lies a horse farm. We wanted to come out to Falcon Ridge to see what it looks like right now before things change. We're with Dr. Gene Noakes, the owner of the property. Dr. Noakes, thank you very much for having us out here. Glad to have you. So before we go any further, Dr. Noakes, you are a retired physician? Yes, I'm a retired nephrologist. And nephrologist is? Uh, someone who cares for patients with kidney disease, and I work for Group Health and built the dialysis and kidney transplant program there. So how long have you had this farm? I built the farm one city lot at a time beginning in 1966. Oh my, so it was, it's uh, 50 years now? Yes. Where we're sitting right now, we're in an arena, I think it's called. Yes. And it, is this where you used to ride? Yes. We built the arena in the early 1970s, mm -hmm. and um, that meant I didn't have to ride outside in the rain, wind, sleet, and snow with my car lights for uh, uh, viewing. It allowed us to train all season. Uh, mostly uh, friends and family rode here. Uh, also, we would occasionally have clinics and have special teachers come, and uh, it was quite festive. Mm -hmm. The arena itself, um, you, I think, said that, that you would have your car lights on. Is that because you would work all day as a physician and then come home and ride horses? Yes, I typically got home between 11 and midnight and then would come down here and ride during the early hours of the morning mm -hmm. and um, sleep four or five hours a night and go back and resume the next day. But I loved riding and um, I remember it with great pleasure. Have you been riding all your life? I had never been on a horse until I was in my 30s. My grandparents were both horsemen, uh, but I was involved with a school and um, medicine and my career. And only when I had graduated from my training program did I start uh, with the horses. We're going to be walking around and getting some sights of this wonderful facility. But this particular building itself actually collapsed one time under a huge snowstorm. The built, this building did not collapse, uh, it stayed, the arena itself, uh, however the barn that is attached to the arena did a collapse and trapped uh, four horses. Three of them were easy to uh, rescue, uh, but one of the horses, my own mare, Cielo, was uh, trapped for about six hours and I took several men, uh, time, effort, and some risk to get her free. Mm -hmm. And she was only out of the uh, danger for about Oh, 10 minutes when the rest of the building, uh, rest of the barn collapsed. Yeah. And we're actually going to meet Jello a little later, right? Yes, we will. So how long ago was that? That was in 1997, December 27th. Well, so 20 years ago, and so Jello's done okay since then. She has. Uh, fantastic. Now, with regard to the name Falcon Ridge, where did that come from? The farm was originally named Noel Arabians. Uh, my grandparents were the Noxes and the Elfranks. So I combined the two names and uh, had the Arabian horse farm here. After the death of my first husband uh, in 1979, I left the, uh, the area. And um, when I came back, I wanted to rename the farm. I owned some property out in Duval where my first husband and I were going to build another ranch. And it was, had falcons all over the hill. So we named the area, that farm was to be named Falcon Ridge. Uh, and I brought that name home with me from Duval. And when we restarted here, made it Falcon Ridge Farm. Yeah, you, you talked about it at first being named Noel Arabians. Correct. Um, you actually have had 56 Arabians at here? At one time, yes. Oh uh, my gosh. Perhaps not my best decision, but it was a <laughs> lot of fun. Uh, is there something different about working with Arabians uh, inside uh, a large municipality like this than it would be out in the middle of nowhere? Not particularly. I became interested in Arabians because uh, when I did start to ride, a friend of mine was riding an Arabian. And they're so exceptionally beautiful and smart that I just wanted to have an Arabian. And one thing led to another and uh, we began to uh, acquire brood mares and then stallions and uh, had lots of babies. and would show them in uh, English Western side saddle Arabian costume halter classes, uh, one occasion uh, harness driving, but um, and friends of mine would jump them. So it was uh, a, a real pleasure. 
What kind of writer were you? I mean, were you uh, like in shows and events and get awards and things like that? Yes, we did. And uh, we had a, a big horse van that would take uh, the horses and we would uh, show mostly in the state of Washington, although sometimes in Canada and sometimes in New Mexico, and uh, at where the uh, national championships were held. Uh, but most of the shows we attended were in uh, the state of Washington and Vancouver, BC, which was one of our favorites. Mm. Let's tell some stories. The first story I want to I want to uh, ask about is the fencing here. I mean, I, I know that may seem kind of odd, but whenever I would drive in northern Kentucky and see some of the gorgeous har horse farms there, one of the things I would always look at is these amazing fences. I understand that your husband actually dug the holes for each one of these posts? He did. The original Noel Arabians, uh, when we started out, uh, our fences uh, were uh, all intact. When I left the stable for a long time and leased it out, however, after uh, 1979, uh, it became very overgrown. And when I came back to the stable, it was uh, basically trashed and uh, so at that time I considered selling it. There were no standing fences, uh, all the stalls were filled with debris and uh, it just wasn't something I felt that I could do. I subsequently uh, met my husband Milton Gibbazani uh, at uh, St. James Cathedral and he offered to help me with the farm and um, he did. <laughs> So over time we married and he built, uh, he laid out a five year plan to rescue the farm and uh, we'd clear sections of it and put in the fences. And there are fences, fence posts every 10 feet, uh, everywhere you see. And he dug every fence post by hand because much of the ground was so harsh that um, the auger on the back of the truck would turn the truck rather than uh, vice versa. <laughs> so he ended up doing it all by hand. That doesn't sound like too much fun. Let's go to some more stories. Uh, you have a 24-year-old three-legged cat that rides cello, or yeah. used to. Yes. Tell us about Luna. Luna came to us when she was a baby, having been deserted in South Park when a family moved and left a litter of kitties behind. One of the boarders at our farm lived nearby and uh, rescued the kitties and brought Luna to us and brought her to us on the full moon, so hence the name. Luna immediately enjoyed riding the horses. She would sleep in the middle of their back. Uh, cello and Savannah were her choices. And sometimes if the horses would be trotting by, she would jump off uh, the radio table and jump on and that would be a little bit of a rodeo. Uh, <laughs> Over time, she would just spend all day on their backs and uh, they, they would ask her to go for a ride and she would jump up on them and they would take her for a ride. Uh, one day she came in with a bad leg injury and she probably had fallen off a horse. And uh, so after attempts to save her leg, uh, the leg was amputated and she has done very well since then. She rode for a while after her injury, but didn't seem to enjoy it as much and so but she does very well. So you rode cello in professional events. We've got a picture of you uh, in one of these events or, or as you were getting ready for, I believe, the Olympics, weren't you? We had a horse who went to the Olympics mm -hmm. and it was a horse that uh, I learned most of my, my dressage with. Um, I had an accident with him and while I was recovering, the horse was leased to a, a friend of mine who was a very accomplished rider and became more accomplished working with this horse and got him to the International uh, Grand Prix dressage level. In Spruce Meadows in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, somebody was looking for uh, a horse for the uh, Mexican Olympic team and was brought to this farm and uh, they purchased him. I rode as an amateur and uh, cello I acquired uh, early on and I've had her for 20 years plus mm -hmm. and uh, I enjoyed riding her because she is always on your side, she's always kind, she's always cooperative and one of the friends who rode her only this morning said it's the only part of her day 
when she absolutely gets no resistance to anything she wants to do. Cello always wants to do uh, what you want to do. So she was a dream horse to train and uh, worked up to uh, one level below the Olympic level of dressage. Hmm. What does that mean, when one level below the Olympic level of dressage? Dressage is a uh, sport that uh, turns into equine ballet. The um, lower levels of dressage, uh, there are five levels, after which time you get to the international levels, and there are four of those. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Cello made her way up, uh, competed successfully at the first level, and then trained through the second level, and then uh, age and life caught up with us and she has retired and teaches others to ride now. There are people who you've talked about who come out here and train. You talked about cello training uh, someone else, but what kind of person has been at Falcon Ridge training horses or working with horses? We've never had an on-site trainer at Falcon Ridge, but we've had guest trainers come and help us with our horses. Mr. Klaus Albin was the first one who did this and he started uh, Contrast Under Saddle and he continued to train Contrast and Contrast and me together and then after I had an accident uh, Mr. Albin went on uh, with uh, my friend uh, who has become a professional trainer. Mm -hmm. You had an accident on a horse? Yes. We've always heard the, uh, the saying get, you've got to get back on the horse and ride. Is that the way it was for you? Not at that moment, and um, so I started riding contrast a year later. Okay, tell us what happened to you. We were at a horse show in Southern Oregon, and uh, there was a lot of commotion outside the arena, and the horses kicked the arena walls, and they were metal, and it made a very, very large sound. Uh, contrast threw his head back and smashed me in the face. Mm. and then galloped off and I was unconscious for the first period. Um, I was badly injured, uh, my head was in 27 pieces mm. and I was airlifted home in an air ambulance with two ICU nurses and had several surgeries and uh, resumed riding about a year and a half later. Were you concerned about getting back on a horse? No. Why not? I guess I love to ride. So I, I don't think that you raise chickens here, but you do have a very famous chicken who used to live here, Othello. Yes. My husband frequently jogged in Seward Park, and one morning he was jogging, this little chicken comes running out, came running out and ran with him. So the next day it happened again, and it was a repeated event. So he started taking chicken feed out to him. There were several other chickens in the park, and before long, uh, my husband was feeding and watering and taking care of the chickens through the entire winter. <laughs> and when we would travel, he would arrange for others to do the same. In the spring and early summer, we noticed that Othello uh, was dragging his wing and appeared to be limping. And uh, some of the other chickens were beginning to uh, prey on him. So my husband, myself, and a visiting 80-year-old, 85-year-old, and a bedsheet went running through Seward Park and captured Othello. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that would have made a good TV program. Yes, so that's, that's for sure. <laughs> we took him to uh, a bird sanctuary and they helped to nurse him back to health and they pointed out to us that he was a pet and not just a regular chicken. So we took him home with us and then decided to bring him to the farm. And um, it was the norm that anybody who was on the farm would be either carrying Luna or the cat or the, uh, uh, the chicken around with him. And when we would have uh, events here and maybe 25 or 30 people sitting here to watch the program, somebody would always be hanging on to, hanging on to Othello or passing him from person to person. He was just a real big part of our lives. Another big part of the farm here, even though you don't raise food here, but was pumpkins. Yes. When driving to Southern California frequently to visit friends, we would go through Half Moon Bay, and Half Moon Bay is the uh, area of giant pumpkins. So we thought that looked like fun. 
We had previously grown small pumpkins, uh, one pumpkin for each border, in the garden outside the other horse barn and decided we would grow giant pumpkins. So it was a project that we did for about three years and uh, the biggest our pumpkins ever got was right around 450 pounds. And then after uh, we harvested them, uh, we would carve them and or paint them and put them outside our home. And then after that, my husband would take them to the local schools and the children enjoyed the pumpkins. Hmm. Sitting here and talking with you and, and feeling the way that you feel around this farm, I, I think I, I know the answer to this question, but I gotta ask it anyway. Why do you love Falcon Ridge? Having a horse farm and riding horses, uh, breeding horses, having the little baby horses, and dreaming of being um, an upper level rider over time uh, had been with me since I was a child, even though I wasn't able to pursue that dream until I was 30. And putting the farm together, uh, it just brought me such joy. And we had a lot of friends and family here. And uh, my friend Grace says that when you drive up the driveway and come through the gate, it's like driving through the wardrobe at Narnia and that is the way most people feel when they come here. As people describe the farm, the term oasis is uh, steadily used, and um, it's a, a wonderful, sweet, peaceful, lovely place to be. What's the most fun of any time that you've had here? Probably watching the baby foals. Uh, getting on their feet and racing around, uh, having the falls. And a very close second would be the uh, dressage clinics that we would have here and have guest riders come and guest teachers. And um, Grace, once again, would put on a very lovely feast. One of our teachers said he would come for the food alone. And <laughs> so uh, those were always very festive events and we made a lot of friends. The other very special moment for me was riding at night and when cooling out the horse, turning out all the lights in the arena and letting the glow of the city uh, light up the arena. And it just feels like a peaceful, holy place. And uh, most of the time it's been filled with joy. Uh, Dr. Notes, there's an article in the Seattle Times, September 13th, 1970. You are looking out over the entire span of the area. And the headline is, An Arabian Horse Ranch Inside Seattle City Limits. Um, the views from here, I, I guess what I'm asking is, how has the uh, farm changed over the years? The uh, farm has changed uh, from that picture in that we've gradually acquired more property. And um, we've grown a lot of trees that I didn't anticipate. Uh, as you can see in this picture, there are a few trees, but they're not very large. And uh, we now have a lot of major trees that have been um, sometimes difficult to, to manage. The views have changed with the trees, and, uh, but uh, the city has grown, the freeway has grown. Um, and Seattle has grown and we've watched it. Mm -hmm. Can you really see Mount Baker sometimes? Yes. Uh, in fact, we can see Mount Baker not only from the balcony of my family home, but we can see Mount Baker in the mirrors of the arena as we ride. Uh, it will be reflected behind you and it's, it's rather lovely. It has to be the time when the leaves are off the trees, however. <laughs> What a great day it is to be at Falcon Ridge. Dr. Noakes, where are we now? We're right outside the garden circle where we have the herb garden. And behind us, we have the uh, paddocks with cello and with Mercedes. And are they enjoying their day as well? Do they like it when it's uh, like this or do they like it when it's rainy like it oftentimes is in Seattle? I think they love it when it's just like this. <laughs> Dr. Noakes, uh, there are challenges about being the owner of a horse farm and sometimes it relates to transferring horses from one place to another. Uh, there was a time where there was an accident with one of your horses. Yes, we had a young stallion named Bo 
whom we leased to a farm in Southern California to be a breeding stallion and arrange for commercial transport to take him there in a large van that would carry up to 12 or 15 horses. Somewhere south of San, Di San Francisco, the driver fell asleep and he was on a high freeway that crossed over several other freeways. He fell asleep, the truck hit the embankment, uh, he flipped the tractor and trailer onto the lower freeway. The tractor trailer exploded, the driver was killed, a second driver was thrown free but injured. A passing motorist stopped and heard a stomping inside the horse van and he went into the burning horse van and found my young stallion and grabbed him by the halter and led him down the ramp then walked him several miles on the freeway till the next exit and after getting him off the exit he was able to find a farm notified them as to what had happened and they called the veterinarian and called us and uh, took care of him. Oh, so the horse lived? The horse did live and he was injured but not uh, as much seriously as you would think and uh, it took him several days of uh, we rest at the horse farm here. Then he went on to uh, San Diego to where he was um, planned to go and they uh, took care of him until he was fully recovered, used him as a breeding stallion, showed him and then purchased him. The man who saved him from the burning van was named Zeke Nation and he was supposedly from King City, California, but I was never able to find him to thank him. Oh. Some of the great things that you get to do, so it's not a challenge, but some of the great things is you get to work with uh, teenagers. And uh, some of the teenagers that you've had here have gone on to some very colorful heights in riding horses from Falcon Ridge. Yes. We were fortunate to have an unusually fun group of teenage girls. One of the girls, Dana Butler, uh, learned to ride here, showed some of the horses here uh, briefly, and as she grew up, uh, took more riding uh, instruction all over the world, and now directs a Riding for the Handicap program uh, down near San Juan Capistrano, California. Uh, another gal, Reagan Ritzhaupt, uh, became very proficient, uh, was uh, a three-day eventer, and on the same horse, uh, her mother would uh, ride in the Strawberry Festival. Uh, a young woman named Monica Harkins uh, enjoyed riding a lot and purchased one of our young mares and started her own farm and bred that horse successfully. I've got to ask you, I haven't ridden a horse in a long time, uh, but it's really clear that there are some people who almost seem like they're born to ride horses. What, what is it? What is the feel when you're riding a horse because you rode it in the arena where we did the other part of the show? Each person has a talent and for many people that talent is riding. And when you're riding it's almost like dancing with someone whether regardless of what discipline of riding it's important for you to move with the movement of the other person. And uh, some people are just very gifted. Other people attain that by just practicing hard and thinking about it and um, they can accomplish their goals but with more effort. So I'm not sure if it's a challenge or if it's a wonderful thing to get to do but, but as the caretaker of, of all of the horses you get to build homes for them and you've built them in uh, the small barn I think you call it. Yes, the original barn here uh, is uh, a 12 stall barn that was gauged mostly for Arabian horses, so the stalls are uh, modest in size, although we have some double stalls that we use for folding stalls. And uh, the, re the small barn was remodeled uh, three years ago. I was fortunate to meet a fellow in uh, Chris Folk Construction, and he was able to uh, retrofit our barn uh, and to remodel it. So as we, as we come to the end, um, as times have changed in the 50 years since you have owned the property here, and as things have changed for, for you, how have the horses adapted to changing changes in their environment, or does it matter to them just as long as they're fed and petted and they have friends? The most important thing for the horses is to have space to roam, 
uh, to have a companion and we've been able to offer a moderate amount of space for them even though we were in the city and it was important to us that our horses be turned out all day every day and they would take turns in some of the larger paddocks so I've never known these particular horses in another setting, so I can't say how they would do. But our horses generally seem to be very happy here. Okay. Dr. Notes, thank you very much for inviting us to Falcon Ridge. Thank you for coming. My name is Shemi from RealLogic Sotheby's Realty. We have spent some time with Dr. Noakes on her property, the Falcon Ridge Farms. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us about the property itself in terms of, is it gonna be developed? Is it likely to stay a horse farm? What's gonna happen? Well, the interest we have received on the property after putting it on the market early in August has been um, enormously from the developer community. We've had all kinds of other um, interested parties as well that wanted to perhaps either keep it a horse farm or or on some level um, some sort of community uh, location but you know whether that will end up coming to fruition is probably not as likely as it becoming a, a development property. Yeah, it's, it's in a, the, not the middle, but it, it is inside a huge city. Yes. And it's beautiful property. It's spectacular. The views from here are enormous. The commute into downtown is less than 15 minutes. It's along a, a thoroughfare that has a lot of, uh, uh, you know, it's a bus, bus, you know, public transportation and busing. Uh, so it makes it a very practical location mm -hmm. for housing. And with the housing market the way it is now in Seattle, and we're having so few um, new homes going up and so many buyers moving into the area that, um, you know, developers are clamoring for properties mm -hmm. that are within the city limits that they can develop and provide additional housing. How many residential units would likely be built on this property? It is 23 city lots and each wow. lot is 7,200 square feet. So depending on what a developer will ultimately decide to do, I would imagine they would probably maximize it to mm -hmm. 23 homes. And from a horse farm standpoint, I mean, you're a horse person yourself. I am, I am. As a horse farm, um, unfortunately, dirt value in West Seattle is just too expensive to keep it as a horse farm, in, in my opinion, so. Okay. Bonnie, thank you very much. Pleasure, it was nice having you here.